Oh, hi, my name is Elliot Wong, and I'm a track engineer with AECOM. In this video, I will talk about the four rail alternatives proposed for the grade separations within Redwood City. If you're looking for the roadway concepts of each grade crossing, click on the corresponding blue icons on the table, or one of the video buttons on the wall. For the railroad exhibits, I will first explain how to navigate around the exhibit, then I will give a summary of the design concept of each alternatives before finally diving into the details of each alternative. To access the exhibit, click on the Caltrain icon and a alternative selection window will appear. Within this window, four alternative buttons with the thumbnail of the profile is available, as well as a button on the top right to download all the exhibits as a PDF. Clicking on Alternative 1 button will take you into the plan and profile exhibits of Alternative 1. You can zoom in and out within this exhibit using your mouse wheel or using two fingers on the touchscreen, push in and pull apart. When zoomed in, use your mouse or finger to drag to view different parts of the exhibit. When you're done with viewing the exhibit, Click on the cross on the top right to get back to the alternative selection window. There is a PDF button on the top right. Clicking on this would open up a separate tab on your browser with the exhibits as PDFs of which you can download and save. On the top right, there is a download and save button. Clicking on this would allow you to save this PDF to your local drive. There are two types of exhibits within this PDF packet. There is the plan and profile, which are also within the virtual community room, showing the vertical and horizontal alignments of the labeled alternative. Second, there is also the enlarged plans. These are identical to the plans within the plan and profile, but has a larger scaling for a clearer and more comfortable viewing of the horizontal alignment. When you're done with all the rail exhibits, Hit the blue cross button on the top right to return back to the main room and do continue to browse other information as well as submit your questions and comments for this project. Let's look at the four alternatives. The major differences of each alternative lies within the vertical alignment, how much and when the railroad is raised. The horizontal alignment differs between each alternative and are variations to allow for the raising of the track to happen. Using this thumbnail as a summary, where the dashed line is the existing railroad and the solid line is the future proposed railroad with exaggerations. In alternative one, it is proposed that the rail be raised on all current grade crossings, achieving full grade separations on all six streets from Whipple Avenue and then returning to grade just before Highway 84. In alternative two, all current grade crossings will eventually be grade separated but this will be done in two phases. In phase one, Whipple Avenue, Brewster Avenue and Broadway will be grade separated with the current Jefferson Avenue rail bridge most likely demolished and rebuilt. In phase two, the remaining Maple Street, Main Street and Chestnut Street will be grade separated and the rails tying back in to existing before Highway 84. Similar to alternative two, Alternative 3 is split into Phase 1 and Phase 2. Phase 1 will have Whipple, Brewster and Broadway grade separated, with the rails tying back into existing just before Jefferson Bridge. This means that little to no modifications is required within the existing rail bridge at Phase 1. The rail bridge is then modified along with the grade separations of Maple, Main and Chestnut during Phase 2. Alternative 4 would only have Whipple Avenue grade separated, whilst all the other grade crossings either closed or remaining as is. Taking a look at Alternative 1 in detail, in the plan and profile exhibit, to the left is north and to the right is south. We have the existing track shown as the dash green, and a proposed track is shown as a solid blue. The plan is aligned to the profile below, meaning that the position of each features matches both in the plan and the profile. It should be noted that the profile is showing a 30x exaggeration vertically. Moving north to south, 
we begin to raise the rails at Washington Street, maintaining on its current alignment horizontally. At D Street, we begin to transition out of the existing alignment towards the west, whilst maintaining the 0.6% incline slope. We reach a full 24 foot elevation from the existing conditions and a 13 foot horizontal shift from existing to the west at Whipple Avenue, and then begin a 0.3% grade decline. We continue the horizontal shift to a total of 23.5 feet from the existing alignment all the way to Jefferson. At around Hopkins Avenue, we begin a roughly 750 foot transition from the two tracks to four tracks, as denoted on the exhibit in Cyan. These four tracks then enter Redwood City Station, denoted as orange. The four tracks would serve two elevated platforms, northbound and southbound. The track and platform are sufficiently elevated to provide the full clearance for the road so Brewster and Broadway remain similar to existing conditions. Passing the station, maintaining the 0.3% slope, we transition back to into two tracks. Between Jefferson and Pine Street, we maintain a 12-foot westward offset from the existing tracks instead of the previous 23.5 foot, and the slope continues at the 0.3% until after Main Street, at which point we begin the 1% decline to dip back down and tie into the existing tracks before we reach Highway 84. The horizontal alignment also begins to tie back to existing at Beach Street. It should be noted that Maple, Main and Chestnut Street the rail does not achieve the full clearance for the road to pass through underneath. Therefore, the lowering of these roads will be required. Please review the corresponding roadway exhibits as well as the videos back in the main room. Going back to the alternative selection window by clicking on the cross here on the top right, we can access alternative two. Like with alternative 1, the left is north and the right is south. The existing track is shown in dashed green, but unlike alternative 1, we have two proposed tracks. Phase 1 is shown in solid blue, and phase 2 is shown in solid red. In phase 1, we transition to the 23.5 foot westward offset much earlier, just south of Howard Avenue in San Carlos and begin the 0.6 incline slope again at Washington Street. We reach the full 24 foot elevation and 23.5 foot offset from the existing conditions at Whipple Avenue and begin a vertical curve and transition back down in a 0.8% grade decline. In alternative two, we begin to transition from two to four tracks in line with Standish Street into the Redwood City Station, denoted as orange again. Due to the steeper decline, Broadway will be lowered to reach the necessary vertical clearance for the road. Passing the station and maintaining the 0.8% slope, we transition back into two tracks and tie into the existing horizontal alignment just after Jefferson. The Jefferson Rail Bridge will need to be rebuilt to meet the new top of rail elevations. We then transition back into the existing vertical alignment, and this will conclude phase one. For phase two, there is no horizontal alignment shift. We raise the rail on the shift made previously in phase one, as well as the existing alignment. We begin another vertical curve at the elevation of the rebuilt Jefferson Avenue rail bridge at a 0.7% incline over Maple and Main Street and then descend at a 0.9% grade over Chestnut to tie back into the existing tracks just before Highway 84. The vertical clearance required by the road cannot be achieved by the raising of the rails, so the three roads will need to be lowered. Alternative 3 is similar to Alternative 2 where there are two phases. The concept is also similar where for phase one, we raise the rail at the first three grade crossings to the north. But rather than modifying Jefferson within phase one, 
we do it in phase two. It should be noted that there are two potential horizontal alignments, so the plans, available for the alternative three, denoted as 3A and 3B. These can be found as enlarged plans within the PDF downloads in the virtual community room. Here we will go through 3A. Moving from left to right, north to south, similar with alternative two, we transition to the 23.5 foot westward offset much earlier, just south of Howard Avenue in San Carlos, and begin the 0.6% incline slope again at Washington Street. This continues south and we reach the full 24 foot elevation and 23.5 offset from the existing conditions at Whipple Avenue then begins a vertical curve and transitions into a 1% grade decline to tie back into the existing rails just before Jefferson. This 1% grade is the maximum allowable slope within Caltrain standards. In the horizontal, we begin to transition from two tracks to four in line with Hopkins into the Redwood City Station. Due to the steep decline, both Brewster and Broadway will be lowered to reach the necessary vertical clearance for the road beneath the rails. We tie back into the existing horizontal alignment at the main library, and this concludes the work for phase one. For phase two, again, there is no horizontal alignment shift. We raise the rails on the shifted tracks made previously in phase one, as well as the existing alignment. We begin another vertical curve at the elevation of Broadway this time, at an incline over Maple Street, and descend at 1% grade over Main and Chestnut to tie back into the existing tracks just before Highway 84. The vertical clearance required by the road cannot be achieved by the raising of the rails, so all three roads will need to be lowered and reconfigured. This concludes the work for Phase 2 of Alternative 3, achieving grade separations on all the current six grade crossings. Lastly, we have alternative four. Alternative four is the alternative that just grade separates Whipple Avenue. Moving north to south, we begin to raise the rail at Varian Street along its current alignment horizontally, at a 0.3% grade incline. At D Street, we begin to transition out of the existing alignment towards the west. We do not reach the full vertical clearance at Whipple on this 0.3 incline, so Whipple Avenue would need to be lowered. Passing Whipple, we decline at the maximum 1% grade to tie back into the existing vertical alignment just before Brewster. There are no further vertical alignment changes from here to the south. Although we're not grade separating the other grade crossings, we still need to accommodate the intended four track station. This is where we would transition from two to four tracks at the decline slope and continue the four tracks into the station with the two proposed at grade platform. South of the station, we transition back into the two tracks and tie back into the existing horizontal alignment just past the main library. No modification works would be required on the Jefferson Avenue rail bridge. This would include the railroad works for alternative four.